for the first Sunday school in 2019. Yes. And we are glad to that we are able to be in the house of the Lord to give him thanks and to give him praise for all that he has done for us. Surely the Lord is good and we have to give him thanks for his goodness. Amen. Um, uh, the Sunday school today is based on the foundation um, the foundation of the world and the foundation of life. Um, we have to understand that the Bible tells us that in the beginning there was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Lord said let there be light so before everything was there was nothing in the physical realm there was nothing in the spiritual realm there was God and the heavenly host but in the physical realm there was nothing it was void and the word of God spoke and said there let there be light and we know the how it began um, he divided the light from the darkness and called it the, the light day and the night the darkness night so then he called the earth out of the sea because before there was just water and he called the earth but when we think about this thing we see how powerful God is that just by his word the earth was formed the huge earth was formed because he said let there be light and everything things came into existence yes. the sea the land the trees and everything that we see here now and know it was all done through the word of God uh, yes. and that is the foundation that God made and God said God created man yes. and he took the dust of the earth as we know we believe in by the word of God and he created man and man was not really man at that time when he formed him out of the out of the out of the earth out of the the dirt the dust man was not man man only became man when he breathed into him now before he breathed into him he was just a lump of clay or a lump of dirt so the breath that God breathed into man bring man alive and what does that tell us that tells us that without God being in us we're dead is this is this is the breath that God breathed into Adam that bring him to be alive, wake him up, give him life, give him movement. Okay, God, he couldn't move without that. So that was the foundation that was set. Um, God created everything. Every animal on the earth, God created. The fowls of the air, the fish in the sea. God created all those things. Just by his word. You know, we need to understand. It was just by his word. It just said, let there be animals. Let there be fish. Let the trees come out. Just his word. So we see by this how powerful... And there was a numerous animals and creatures, creeping things, walking things, flying things, f- swimming things, yeah. all through the word mm. of God. Amen. So we see the word of God is powerful. 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 But then God said, God said, he formed man and he placed man in the Garden of Eden. Yes. Now, the Garden of Eden was a perfect place. Mm-hmm. The Garden of Eden was where the presence of God is. Now, if we think about the Garden of Eden, 
the Garden of Eden when God created Adam, placed him in the garden. In the garden. In the garden. Place Adam in the garden. What was in the garden? Okay. Adam had full dominion yes. over everything. He was there as a overseer. Yes. He was totally in charge. We have to remember that God gave man dominion. Yes. Now this word dominion is a very important word. Dominion. someone dominion over something, they are in charge of it. Okay, that's very important. But we understand that man was in charge of the earth. And God had communion with Adam. He came down in the cool of the day and him and Adam had communion. And they commune. You know, they have everything was nice. In the garden, there was everything good. Yeah. There was the joy. There was the peace. Mm -hmm. There was the love. Mm -hmm. There was the yeah, happiness. Yeah. Part of the surroundings of Adam when God put his place in the garden. There's other things in this way. So he was a perfect man in a perfect environment. So the, he was at peace. He was happy. Okay? And obviously, we see what happened. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a foundation that God laid. But obviously, God knew, and we have to understand that God knew mm -hmm. that Adam was going to sin. Yes. There was no doubt about it. God knew mm -hmm. that Adam was going to sin. Mm -hmm. And before... Adam sinned, he made provision. Yes. Even before he committed the act. Yes. Yes. Because he knew. Now who can say that God did not know that Adam was going to sin? There's no doubt about it. Okay? So before Adam sinned, he laid a foundation. And um, as we have here now in our lesson, Revelation chapter 13 in verse 8, it's on the paper. Um, we're talking about the foundation. The foundation that God laid. When God... Are you okay, Sister Clark? You alright? Yeah. Okay. The foundation that God laid was a sure foundation. Yes, and not only that, it was a good foundation. Mm -hmm. Because after the creation, mm -hmm. God looked at everything that he did. And what? It good, Behold, it was good. It was real. Mm -hmm. It was solid. It would endure. Okay? So, in Revelation 13 on your paper, it says, only that dwell on the earth shall worship him whose name was not written 
lamb's book of life slain from the foundation of the earth. So this is what I'm trying to say now is that God made provision. When the devil tempted Eve, caused her to sin against God, God said to her when they sin, that thy feet shall bruise his head and his shall bruise thy heel. That was because God knew what's going to happen and he knew what provision he is made. And the first foundation was soiled and spoiled because of disobedience. And because it was soiled and spoiled, God had to put in had to rebuild a new foundation. Now, I don't know if any of you even know about construction. With construction, the foundation is very important. If you won't make that foundation good, that house is not going to last. It's not going to be strong because the foundation is what's going to hold the building. The foundation is what is going to make it strong. <coughs> if the foundation is weak, the building weak. So that's why when you see, you know, as some of you have been in construction, if you see they put a, a building, a building, they have to dig, dig deep, and put to re- the, they have to put the best, strongest mix, because you know that's when you mix in matter, it can be weak and it can be strong. You can mix it. If you put too much sand in it, then it becomes weak. If you put more cement in it, it becomes stronger. So the foundation has to be strong. And that's why Jesus himself had to be the new foundation. So so God made that preparation that if this foundation here, which God had to drive out Adam out of that, because of disobedience, yes. because of sin. Mm. Drove him out of the garden yes. and sent, put angels there with flaming soul yes. that he couldn't cherub him, yes. so he could not end, re-enter the garden. Yes. Because that foundation yes. that he had, he, he, he lost it. Yes. And God <clears throat> made a provision. Mm. So we see the Bible tells us about the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. It was done. It was finished. Even though the enemy caused them to to disobey God and to destroy and damage the foundation. He had to put a new foundation in place. So, but this, when he told him that, when God told that the, 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 the enemy will bruise the heel of the seed of Adam and Adam's seed would bruise the enemy's head. So who was this that was supposed to bruise the head of the enemy? It was Jesus. So God had that plan. God had that plan that Jesus would be here, would come and bruise the head of the enemy. And you know, that happened yes. when Jesus came. Mm-hmm. But we have to realize that Jesus has always been in the word of God. Every page, every, page, every chapter is talking about Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's talking about the Lord. Yes. So the Lord's foundation has always been there. Mm-hmm. But it was established a new foundation <coughs> when he died upon the cross. Yes. So Jesus is not just started as a little baby in a manger. Jesus was there from the beginning. He said he's the Alpha and the Amigo. He's the beginning and the ending. So right through the scripture, we're talking about Jesus. He is Lord. So important that we understand the foundation. And it's important also that we understand how we relate to this foundation. We have to relate to this foundation. It's a building, 
It's not just a foundation, but you use blocks to build a building, mm -hmm. and you build a building up. You use steel. You use steel. You use the block is also to you make it strong. Yes. Now, you know, Jesus used a parable to explain to us to understand mm -hmm. what the kingdom of heaven is all about. Mm -hmm. Because we can, only, we can only interpret heaven by what we see here and understand. We can only, you know, and with natural things. So, the, the, when you put in blocks together, I have to use like a construction thing. When you put in blocks together, you have to cement to hold them together. Now, for us, building up, on this foundation that Jesus made, yes. our faith mm. is Amen. a very important part of the building. Yes. It is our faith mm. that holds mm. us together. Yeah. It is our faith that holds us mm. into that foundation. Yes. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes. So, Basically, we can't build a building without faith. The building that God, the foundation that God made, we cannot build it without faith. Nothing will stand. And you have to have other things because it's mentioned quite rightly, steel. Steel is important. It's not just cement and block and steel and other things we need to use to make the building. But unless we understand this from a natural perspective, it's very hard to understand this from a spiritual perspective. So we have to use the natural to understand the spiritual. There's no way we can understand spiritual things like that. And that's why Jesus all speaks in parables. Because if we have a hope in our, then we can understand and we can, we can relate. Because God, Jesus says to Nicodemus, I tell you of natural things. And you cannot understand. What happens if I tell you about heavenly things? So if we can understand natural things, how can we understand heavenly things? We have to understand how natural things work. He says the wind blow it, we're enlisted. We don't know where the wind comes from. And we don't know where it goes. Because we can't see it with the eyes. You feel it, but you can't see it. I said, so is he that born of the Spirit. You can see it, but you, you don't know where it goes and where it comes. The Spirit of God is like that. So, we have to build upon this foundation. Um, uh, in Luke chapter 11 and verse 50, it's on the paper here. Luke chapter 11, verse 50. Somebody read that for me. We're still talking about the foundation. Yeah, Luke 11, verse 50. That the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. Yes. So, everything, the blood of the prophets the patriots and the prophets, right down to us. Everyone that shed blood, everyone as Jesus shed blood, Jesus shall bring into recompense for everything that we suffer, that we've lost. Because God sp spread out heaven like a curtain, the Bible says that. He spread it out the heaven like a curtain. Mm -hmm. It's just like a curtain to us. Mm -hmm. You know, if we think about when they was building the tower, mm -hmm. okay. Abela, mm -hmm. they was all they was doing, they was trying to get to heaven. heaven. Yes. Basically, what they was trying to do, they was trying to build a foundation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were trying to build a foundation to get to heaven. Yeah. And when we see God had to com, 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 confuse them because at that time there was just one language but they wanted to do their own thing and so it is today 
Man want to be their own, put their own foundation to get to God. You know, if we think about the world, how people spend so much money sending people out in space. It's no different from, from, from what the man was doing when he was trying to build the tower. It's, it's no different. They're trying to get to heaven. They're trying to get to God. And they're building rockets. And if we think about it, if God did not confuse, confound them in that days, can you imagine if everybody was speaking the same language? Can, no, the power that they would have. The power that they would have if they were in China, Russia, Britain, America, by themselves they have so much knowledge and they can do so many things. They're making robots now. Well, look like human, act like human. I couldn't tell you the half of it, but they're making robots now. You see people walking and anything, they're human. They're, they call them android. So I'm saying, if we think about that, if all countries, darling, I beg your if you have no water there, please, my truth is right. <coughs> if all countries were speaking the same language, we wouldn't be able to live here because of the power of the knowledge. But because they all have different language, they can't do as much as they would like to do. Thank you, darling. Thank you. I don't know why my truth is not right. <laughs> Um, so we see that um, man has always tried to build their own foundation but the Bible says there is no other foundation but that that was laid so if the foundation is already laid we can't lay another one we can't make a new one we have to build on that foundation and that foundation in these days is the Lord Jesus and to build on him, we are maybe the blocks, we may be the steel, we may be the cement, but we have to build on that foundation. So no matter what's going on around us, we have to stay, we have to build on the rock foundation. And that foundation, we say, build on the rock, build on the solid rock. Because Jesus also told a parable of the man who built his house upon the sand. And the man who built his house upon the rock. So we have a choice. <laughs> we have a choice to say we're going to build on the, house, on the rock or on, on the sand. If we build on the rock, it will withstand the storm. It will withstand the rain. It will withstand the hurricane. It will withstand anything as long as we are building. This is a spiritual house. We are building. A physical one is a spiritual house. And we have to build spiritual upon spiritual. We can't build natural upon... And that's what some people try to do. They try to put their... What God has said, the foundation, they try to put their own thing in it. They try to put their own input. They try to change it a little bit and say, it don't look right. But then we are mixing the spiritual with the physical. And that doesn't work. So, moving on, we see um, uh, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 34. It tells us, um, somebody read that for me, please. Eh? And shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, of, kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay, so Jesus is saying this in Matthews. Um, it, yes, that it might be fulfilled. Now, the king say unto them at my right hand. So, in the last days, when he come, when Jesus come, he shall divide the sheep from the goats. Right? But the important thing that we, realize, we must think and realize is that the play, the, the, what he has prepared for us was prepared from the foundation of the world. We have to realize that, as I mentioned in the start, that 
man was not man when God made man in, into clay. He was the shape of man. Yes. He wasn't the shape of man, but he wasn't man. Man became man when God breathed into him and he became a living soul. So what we have to realize is only that which came from heaven can go back to heaven. Because this was prepared for us, what God had, was prepared from the foundation of the earth. Your house was built before this world began, before God made creation. We were in God. Don't believe that our lives started when we got born 50, 60, 70 years ago. And that's not where our life began. If we think that where our life began, then we are missing. Our life didn't begin when we were born as a little child. Our life began in God. And that's where we're going back to. So, this was prepared, the foundation. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. When I come back, I will receive you unto myself. There's a place prepared from the foundation of the world for every child of God. So we, we have to recognize that we are peculiar people. And in us, and there's a part of God in us, what we call the soul. That is a part of God. And that's an eternal. And then people don't understand that. Uh, people are saying that when you die, that's the end of it. Your soul, with everyone's soul, is immortal. Everyone's soul, everyone that called soul is immortal. That means it cannot die. But you know, the devil fooled people and said, well, when you die, you evaporate and go to thin air. That's how the devil fooled people, and that's why people don't bother to come to God. Because they believe that so when they die, oh, that's it, finish. I, I, I may evaporate in thin air. It's not like that. When we die, we are conscious. And Jesus told the parable about the rich man and, and the poor man and Davies and Lazarus. Jesus, you see, that's, Jesus explains it to us. And, you know, we have to understand that you're conscious. When you're dead, you're conscious. You're in the spirit. You're in the spirit world. Your spirit is taken and you're conscious. Davies was conscious. He was conscious. He found himself in hell. And you know, some of the churches nowadays, they don't want to preach and tell you about hell. But Jesus spoke about it. There is a place called hell. A place prepared. God created hell. Not for man. God prepared hell for the devil and his angels. But because man chose to disobey God, then they are tied to the devil. They are tied to the devil. You know, the Bible says God would that not any should perish. God don't want anything to anyone to perish. But then God give us a free will. It's our choice. You know, <laughs> we have to realize that the choice is ours. It says, yes, two rows choose. Make your choice. But, you know, God is good because he said, whosoever will. He, he opened, the Bible said, open wide the gate. The gate opened wide. You know, from a spiritual perspective, the gate is open wide. God not partial who come in there. You could be the king or you could be the papa. You could be down on the street begging. You could be sleeping on the street. God don't care about these things that we care about. God care about the soul of man. And that's God what God's concerned about. 
And so when we realize this, he's opened the wide the gate. But, but on top of that, the Bible tells us that the gate of God has widened the gate of hell as well. Enlarged. The gate of hell is enlarged. It's enlarged because God, could, God can see that many would go, many would disobey, many would shake. I don't want him. And even though we are in the time of mercy, mercy pleaded. You know, um, I was talking to someone, or witnessing to someone, one of my relatives over the weekend, and I was saying that, listen, it's time for you to find God now. And um, you see, the thing is, the devil full up. You see, people out there who are not saved, the devil full them up with a whole leap of rubbish. Every word you said to someone, they were trying to find something else to say to you. Because the devil has planted so much things inside of them. And the Bible says, Jesus said, can't put new wine in an old bottle. It will burst the bottle. So I was saying, we're listening to this relative of mine. I said, listen, man, everything that you know, you have to drop it. You have, you have to just clean, clean out your mind. You have to clean out your mind. You have to come with an open, open heart. There's no way else that somebody out there can come to God if they have their own conception of God. They have to let go of that conception. Because that conception is so mixed up and mongled up and, you know, you could be witnessing to somebody and I'm telling you, this no look right and that no look right. Why God make people suffer? Why God make people hungry? I said to the individual, I said, listen, I don't have a problem with the Bible because I understand what God wants, what God is doing. And if you talk about people suffering and people hungry and people this and war this and war this and you talk about that and you're blaming God. But God himself came down from his heavenly throne and he suffered. He suffered. He bled and he died. So, if God can suffer, what about us? And bear in mind that he was sinless. Innocent. Not like us. We are guilty. Like the thief on the cross. Where we deserve it to be up here. But this, this man hasn't done anything. We did not have women cursing us, swearing, uh, doing anything. We, 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 you know, you see people, and you can look at people and say, this person, I, I haven't heard anything bad about this person. I haven't, I've seen this person moving and so forth. And you can tell by the character that this person is a good character. You can tell. You don't know nobody to tell you. You can just, or maybe you can, through the spirit, you might just feel that this character it's a good character. And so then the thief knew that Jesus was a clean man. Him clean. His record clean. And he admit we are guilty. But he's not. And this understanding that he had about Jesus was able, that Jesus was able to clean, cleanse him at the same time Forgive him and grant him a place in his kingdom. So the understanding that we have is very important. And that's why the Bible says we must study to show ourselves approved. We can't go to heaven unless we have understanding. We need to have understanding. And we need to have understanding of the word of God. We need to understand who God is. And we have to understand who we are. Because the Bible says, any man that cometh unto God must believe that he is and a rewarder. 
Um, Hebrews, um, <coughs> Hebrews, uh, what's this? Um, no, but Matthew 13.35. Let's read that. I'm going to try to rush on. I'll try to rush on with this. Matthew 13.35. Somebody read that for me, please. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Secret. Secret. So there's things from the foundation of the world. It's kept secret. A kept secret. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be revealed revealed to us. It was revealed to um, uh, John on the Isle of Padmas. Mm -hmm. But you realize the fact that John, it could not be revealed to him while he was in the the body, in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And that John says, I was in the spirit Mm -hmm. on the Lord's day. So we have to be in the spirit to understand the mysteries. So not everything about God we are going to understand while we're in the body. The body is limit us, limit our knowledge. But when we're out of the body, then we understand. And we see where we're coming from. And we see the secrets. But we cannot understand the secrets of God while we're in the body. Yes, he will reveal. He will reveal. Yes, he can reveal things to us. He can reveal, like, he can reveal things to us. Mm-hmm. He speaks to us in parts. Mm-hmm. But he said his secret, his sorry Yes, mm-hmm. yes, but he, we know in parts. Yes. The Bible says in um, Corinthians 13, verse Corinthians 13, we know in parts. Yes. We understand in parts. Mm-hmm. But when he, we, he does come, oh, we, we will understand yes. everything. Yes. We prophesy in parts. Mm-hmm. We, we are limited to our understanding, but our understand God give us sufficient understanding what we need to carry us through. So no man can say, I know everything. It's God that gives us wisdom according to measure. You know, he give everyone according to measure. Uh, leave the six Hebrews, please. Hebrews 4, verse 3. Somebody read that for me, please. Return to Russia, true. He which shall believe do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So that means the kingdom was prepared for us from the foundation of earth. That's why I'm saying that we're not going to somewhere that we have never been before. It's only because we are confined in the flesh. Then we do not know where we're we're coming from. But this was foundation, was finished from the beginning of the world. Somebody read Peter um, chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1. Who verily was foreordained before before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you? Yes. So everything that we go through, the Bible said it was foreordained. Mm-hmm. Them who God foreknew, mm-hmm. he called. Yes. And those who he called, he ju- justified. Yes. So mm-hmm. this is what the point I'm trying to get to us really, is to understand that we were there before the beginning. Yes. We as children of God mm-hmm. were there before the beginning of, of the foundation of the world. We were there from the foundation. You know, Jesus said to them, before Abraham was, I am. Because some people believe that Jesus began in, in the little town of Bethlehem. They believe that's how Jesus came on the scene. But Jesus has been through the whole, from all the way. Because the Bible tells us, somebody please say it. The From the foundation of the earth. So, um, yeah. So, Jesus has been through the scriptures. It was there with Moses. The Bible says they drank of the rock. And this rock was Christ. So, they, Jesus was there when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. He was there as a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. And he led the children of Israel. So, that Jesus is the foundation. 
And he was the first foundation, and he, because that foundation, they lost that foundation, Jesus had to come back and reestablish a new foundation. His blood, his sacrifice has given him that foundation, and that's the only foundation that we could ever, could ever save us. No other foundation. The Bible says all the blood and Jewish altar slain could not give the guilty conscience peace yes. now wash away his stain. So no matter how much blood of bulls and goats and turtle doves and all those things that they offer could not free the world, could not release us from sin, but it took the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus because it was a spotless it was sinless. The only sacrifice that could have been accepted for our sins. That's the only sacrifice could accept it for the sin of the world. So you see how great is our God. Um, Peter, uh, as I said, Isaiah 40, verse 21. Somebody read that for me, please. Have you not known? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? Have you not been told? That's what Isaiah said. Have you not known? Question. Have you not heard? Question. Have you not been told from the foundation of the earth? Have you not understood? From the foundation of the earth. What do we know about the foundation of the earth? We know the Lord. The Lord is the foundation. And we should understand that we were there from the foundation. We have to understand that. We are part of God. If we are not part of God, then we have no hope. And if God is not in us, we have no hope. God is in us. And we, not only God is in us, but we have to be in God. We have to be, found ourselves in God and God in us. It's a mutual thing. He said, I would be in you. And you be in me. I in you and you in me. It's, it's a, a, a tie. <laughs> you know, it's a tie. <laughs> we can't say we're in God and God is not in us. I mean, a lot of people do that, you know. <laughs> a, a lot of people these days, they, they know God more than me and you. And they do everything they want. And they say anything they want. And they go anywhere they want. But them in God. But God not in them. Because if God was in them, they wouldn't do some of the things that they're doing. But they tell you, yeah, man, me, me a Christian, me love God, me and a God, and God, you know, but it has to be two. I in God, God in you. So, um, then we read on Ephesians 1 4. We're just talking about the foundation. The foundation. Read that for me, please. As he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Very good. Okay. So we have to listen, follow the word of God. According as he has chosen us in him. Now that's what I say, in him. Okay? We have to be in him. Before the foundation of the world. He has chosen us in him. From the foundation of the world. So we have to understand. From the foundation of the world. He has chosen us. Thank you my sister. He has chosen us before. So this is what I'm trying to say to us. That we were there before the foundation. Before God 
call it out out of darkness. That's what the Bible is telling us. So you, you're not 70 years old. You're not 60 years old. You, you, you're not 50 years old. You're whatever years old you think you are. That's not you. That's what the Bible is telling us, brethren. We have to understand what the Bible is telling us. Before the foundation of the earth, we began. We was there. Now, um, we have much time. Um, I, I just want to jump down, jump down a bit because I think we're going to run the time. We will jump down at that very bottom there. Can somebody read for me Job at the very bottom? Job um, 28, verse 4, at the very bottom of this. Because this is what I, I'm um, trying to say. Job, somebody read that for me, please. Job Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare it, if thou hast understanding. Okay. Now, remember, we were chosen before the foundation of the earth. That's what the Bible says. Now, God is saying to Job now, Job, where were you? Where were you? Because Job was a bit confused because he was suffering and he being righteous. Don't know why I'm doing everything right. I'm serving God. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm doing everything to, to please God. But I'm suffering. What, what, what is going on? You know, he, he, he's confused about his suffering. Being righteous. Yes. So he prayed for peace and he's not getting peace. He's praying for comfort and he's not getting comfort. He's calling upon God. He's doing everything that he can do, possibly do as a righteous man. I can't do anything more, but yet I'm suffering. Why is this? So he's confused. So God said to him, Job, where were you? Answer me. When I laid the foundation, where were you? You can't see that you were with me and you was in my bosom. We explain because God will never ask you something that you can't answer. But that sometimes we have to understand where we are from and why we go through what we go through. So he didn't understand. And God had to say, look again. Because sometimes we need to look again. Sometimes when we are troubled on every side, and you know, when things are not working out for us, and we're doing the very best we can, we're trying. And God knows we're trying. But things is not going the way. And we, and we say, why? Why? Oh, so much prayer. So much fasting. So much sacrifice. So much pleading. And, uh, and nothing is happening. It's getting worse. So God had to say, listen, you're missing out something, Job. You're missing out something. The love that I have for you. That you was with me before the world began. And I have already planned your life, Job. And I've already prepared a place for you, Job. Look, Job, look, 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 look deep in your soul. And that's what we need to do sometimes. We need to look deep in our soul. And when we look deep in our soul, we realize that the love that God has for us. And when things come upon us and difficult times, and when we seem like God is not listening, we see that God, God, God no business. It's just a God no business. We say what? God is far, millions million of miles away. God not hearing us. God, God, God spiting us. All those things come to our head. And then when we look deep, deep in our soul, and we see the love of God, it cannot help us. When we, see, when we, see, yeah, it encourage ourselves. When we see what God Himself is, King of Kings, and is Lord of Lords. Imagine. Look what he came down to. You know, yes, it's like the, that man that had a scenery that was walking in the sand. Yes, yes, yeah. Difficult time of his yes, life. yes. When he wanted um, the Lord to be there. And God, he it was his, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jesus said to him, my dear child, 
when you only see one footprint, I will carry you. That is it. That is it, Bertrand. Yes. And that's why Peter says the, the little affliction, yeah, little, yeah, the, the li- light. Yeah. Virgin, I know about you. I got you here in this life. No, I know many, I think everybody here has been through hell. Yes. I think every one of us as children yes. of God has been through some sort yes. of hell. Yes. No doubt about it. Yes. Once you're a child of God, yes. you will go through some sort of hell on this yes. life. Yes. So I know. Yes. Sometimes you can't even pray. Sometimes you can't pray. Sometimes you, the Bible says go in the spirit. You can't find the words. Your heart is heavy. Your heart heavy like lead. Only the tears coming down. You know, it happened to every one of us. Every every child of if if you don't suffer, if you've never suffered before. You're not a Christ, you're not a child of God yet. You're not a child of God. Everyone that lives holy in Christ must suffer persecution. Must carry a cross. Must. There's no two ways about it. But the Bible says, even though, as I said, sometimes the heart is so heavy. And everything is heavy. You know, everything coming down like you like you can. The world. On your shoulder. That's that's how it is, brethren. First, we carry the whole world on your shoulder. And even though that is happening to us, Peter says it's a light affliction. It's a light affliction. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus because this thing will go. Brethren, the suffering will end. Brethren, the suffering will end. And the, the, the one song one writer says, just a glimpse of him in glory. With, with all the toils. Mm. Oh, the, <laughs> we must think about heaven you now. Brethren, we must think about heaven you now. Because that's where we plan to go. That's where we come to church. That's why we serve God. That's how we plan to go to heaven. The light affliction. And just a glimpse of him. A glimpse? A glimpse? Mm-hmm. Bergerin, the foundation is set. Without the foundation, we would have nothing at all. Without the foundation, we would have no hope. We would have a building. But we are the building of God. We are the building. We are the temple of God. Time is upon us. Um, so basically, um, uh, so basically, if I just want to sum up and say that the foundation, God is the foundation of life. Everything we see and not see comes from God. God created everything that we see and everything we see. And He created it. By his word. Anything that we want from God, God speak the word and it is done. You know, so we don't, once we get, once God promised to supply our needs, he promised to take care of us, we have to go through the battle. We are soldiers. When we become Christians, we become soldiers. There's no soldier that don't have to fight. And we have to, why are we soldiers? Because we have to fight war. Amen. Amen. We're not soldiers because we are soldiers. We're soldiers because we have to fight war. Amen. Soldiers only soldiers because they have to fight war. Amen. And once we become soldiers, the enemy sees us. Yes. Soldiers of the cross. And we and will be attack, attacking us. Amen. But he promised that he will be with us. Yes. And when we have that comfort... Well, we have that comfort that the great God who created heaven and earth is with us. We have to have that faith that we can do anything. That we can go through anything. That he will bring us through anything. And no matter how challenging 
it comes, it becomes challenging to us. No matter what this, the, the situation becomes challenge, challenging to us, God has a way to get us out of it. He has a way. He make a way where there's no way. And we think about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And there was the mountain on that side, the mountain on that side, and the Red Sea in front of them, and, and behind them. So that is just telling you how our God works. The, the, you're trapped. Feel when it's men them coming, and you know that they're going to come and wipe you off, wipe you down. The mountains, you can't climb mountain with chariots, because they had chariots and everything. They had, they had everything, you know, they couldn't climb mountain. A mountain on both sides, and the sea in front of them. And they can't swim across the sea. So the situation like this come upon us. And that was an example for us. That we will be in a situation where we don't see how we're going to get out of it. We don't see any way we're going to get out of it. But we call upon the Lord. And God has God made a way for them. God said to Moses, stretch your hands. And David said, that right in their staff. Do I walk to the valley of the shadow of the... You remember walking through the shadow, valley of shadow of death? That's not nice, you know. The valley of the shadow of death. You don't know what's going on. You're in the valley. And you're in the shadow. And there's death on this side and death on the other side. Death is behind you. Death is before you. That's how it is. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. That is our portion, brethren. I will fear no evil. So now what? Now what? I want the devil to throw at us. Now what? What the devil put in front of us? I put behind us. I'm put in front of us. We will not fear no evil. We will not fear no evil. We go forward. Forward still is Jehovah's will. Why do the dishes splash and spray? God bless you, my brethren. I think I'll stop there. Um. You just have to realize our heritage is God give us and it's only God can take it away from us and God surely will not take away what he has given us God is not like man like man comes slackness Pastor Scott would you like to say a few words before I close up sir time is there okay God bless you my brethren we love um, I would ask um, sister